Hi everyone, welcome back to the final episode of the Spring Garden Series. This is the day we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna show you how to get your vegetable seedlings planted in the garden in a cheap and simple way. I'm so excited for you guys. We started our seeds indoors on the first episode, been growing them under grow lights, watering, fertilizing. Maybe you've lost a few along the way, and that's okay. You've been transitioning your seedlings to the outdoors, preparing your garden bed, and today we're gonna to get our vegetable seedlings planted in the garden. We are going to be planting some warm weather vegetables today. Tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and squash. Now those vegetables do well in temperatures between 60 and 85 degrees. So if you're after your last frost date of your season, now's the time to plant them in the garden. So we've prepared our garden bed for planting on a video of a couple of days ago. We're doing a super easy method called the no dig method. Now the no dig method keeps it very, very simple because we don't have to dig up the whole entire garden bed. We just layered compost over the whole bed. The nutrients from the compost will soak down over the growing season and really help feed the plants. And by not tilling up the entire garden bed, it protects the soil microbes and the worms under the soil and really helps them do the work they need to do to keep their plants healthy. So first off, we're gonna plant a tomato and use this existing cage here. So we're repurposing what we had from last year to keep it very inexpensive. And I'm just gonna dig a hole for the tomato itself. So we're gonna dig down as deep as we can go because tomatoes like to be planted deep. Wherever the stem touches the soil, the tomato plant puts down roots. So we're gonna get this tomato as deep as we can into the planting hole. So it'll be a nice, sturdy, stocky plant that will grow us a lot of delicious tomatoes. Using compost in the garden is a very budget-friendly way to garden because you're making use of the kitchen scraps and garden waste, composting it down into wonderful nutrients that will feed your garden. So all this beautiful black compost is right on top of my soil. And we're also gonna add some to the planting hole. Now that we have our hole dug for our tomato plant, a few basics about tomatoes. They're a warm weather vegetable and they love to be planted in full sun. Six to eight hours is best to grow, grow yourself a lot of tomatoes. Now before we plant our tomato though, I'm gonna add some additional nutrients to the planting hole. Tomatoes like a lot of food so that you can grow all those tomatoes that you want to eat and have in your garden. And to keep it inexpensive, we're gonna add another handful of compost. I made this right here in my own garden. It'll help give the tomato nutrients and help break up the soil and also bring in the worms. Now I'm also gonna add some Vermisterra worm castings. Worms are great for the garden and the worm castings have all the beneficial bacteria and microbes to keep your plants healthy. So just a little handful here. Give that a little swish down in there, and now we're ready to plant our tomato. Today we're gonna to be planting a Golden Jubilee tomato. This is a seed in my spring garden seed collection, a delicious yellow beefsteak tomato. It's what's called an indeterminate tomato. It's a large vining plant, will reach about eight to 10 feet tall. And indeterminate just means that it grows and produces over several months, then is killed off by the first frost. One way that you can keep your garden very, very inexpensive is to plant your vegetables from seeds. And it's not too late. You can get some started and have some growing in your garden very soon. So you can see here in this little Smart Pots transplanter, I have four different tomato seedlings. We're only gonna plant one today because tomatoes are a very large plant. This one's gonna grow to about eight to 10 feet tall and really fill up this cage. So I'm actually just gonna pull out one of these seedlings. I'm gonna take the biggest seedling, pop it in this cage here, so you can see I'm just kind of reaching gently down in here. Soil is nice and loose. I'm pulling out the plant. So I'm gonna drop the tomato down into the hole. I've dug a nice deep hole so it will grow roots wherever the stem touches the soil here and be a nice dirty plant. So now I'm just gonna fill the hole in with the soil that I removed. And you can see here that I'm working around my drip irrigation hoses are gonna provide nice deep watering for my tomato. But if you don't have drip irrigation, just water with your hose and your nozzle or your watering can. There's also some compost going into the hole. It's gonna really loosen up the soil and provide a nice little home for my new tomato plant. It's so easy to plant a tomato and keeps it really cheap when you use compost that you make right in your own garden. I'm also gonna put a tag here so I know exactly what variety I planted and I write the date on the back to keep track of when I planted it too. Now what I'm going to do is spread another handful of compost around the top of the plant. That way when I water the plant just a moment here, all the good nutrients from the compost will soak down into my tomato plant and help it be really productive. If you don't have your own compost, see if you can find a bag at your local garden center. And a lot of landscape companies sell it in bulk. 
So now what we're gonna do is water in all those good nutrients into our tomato plant. And an option that you can use if you have a little bit of extra in your budget is to water with Vermisterra worm tea. Again, worms are so good for the garden. This is tea made from worm castings. We put three to six ounces into the watering can here. Give it a quick little stir and then soak down my tomato plant. Tomatoes like to be watered deep, so I'm watering it in, letting a little puddle form and then letting it soak down into the soil and watering again. This will encourage the tomato's roots to go down deep into the soil, be a nice, strong, healthy plant, and be able to take up the water it needs to grow. So when you're planting tomatoes, it's really important to provide them with some support. You can make a DIY cage if you want to. This one was made out of concrete remesh, attached together with zip ties, and cost me under $10 to make, will last me for years. And you can watch the video on that so you know exactly what to do. And if you don't have the budget to make a tomato cage, you can just use a simple stake and tie your tomato to the stake as it grows. I'm just gonna plant one tomato plant here in this little garden bed. But if you're planting a couple in a row, you wanna make sure you space them about two to three feet apart so they don't get too close together. They need a lot of airflow so they can produce well and to avoid disease. Moving down through the garden bed here, we're gonna plant some cucumbers right here in this spot. They're gonna climb up over this trellis and be absolutely beautiful and delicious for you. Now, when you're growing a garden, you don't have to have a ton of space. This garden bed is about two and a half feet by maybe about six feet. You can grow a lot of veggies in a little bit of space. So look for those little spots in your garden and then get your vegetables planted. Now remember, we're growing our garden on the cheap. So we're growing everything from seed. So I've got some little seedlings that we started here on a video a few weeks ago. These are lemon cucumber plants. They're in my cucumber seed collection. And we're gonna put about three or four cucumber plants in this small little space. Cucumbers can be planted a little closer together and you are gonna absolutely love your own fresh, tasty cucumbers. So we've got some lemon cucumbers and also a Boston pickling cucumber. It's a delicious slicing cucumber. You can also use it to make pickles, so that'll be a lot of fun too. So we're pretty much gonna use the exact same methods that we use for planting the tomato, aside from a couple little tips and tricks. So I'm gonna dig a hole and I'm gonna place a plant at the base of this tree branch here, which is acting as a trellis. I'm also putting it right next to a little drip emitter so that it gets the water it needs to grow lots of cucumbers. And cucumbers don't need to be planted deep like tomatoes, so I don't need to dig near as deep of the hole. Now the no-dig method is so easy, you only need to dig down the same depth as you need to get your seedlings in, which in this case is about three inches tall, the same size as my cucumber peat pellets. To keep it simple, we're adding the exact same thing to our cucumber planting hole that we did with our tomatoes, a handful of compost, and a small handful of worm castings to each hole. Cucumbers are also warm weather vegetables. They love nights of around 60 degrees, daytime temperatures of 70 to 85 degrees, and they also love to be planted in full, full sun. Now I started these in peat pellets. It's a super easy way to start your seeds. If you need to know more about starting seeds indoors, then go back and watch the first video in this series to learn more about it. So with cucumbers, again, they don't need to be planted deeply like tomatoes do. You wanna set your cucumber plant and put it just at the top of the soil level here of the peat pellet and then we're gonna fill around it with additional soil and additional compost. And this is the lemon cucumber. I'm gonna put my tag in here. And I'm planting it right next to this trellis and we're gonna tie it up to the trellis as it grows to give it some nice support. And here we have another lemon cucumber plant. You can see I've got two seedlings here in this peat pellets. That's okay, cucumbers grow well when they're spaced close together. And if it gets too crowded in here, we can always thin it out and snip one cucumber out. I'm gonna put it in my planting hole here. Cucumbers are vining plants, so they do need support. So we've got our tree branch trellis here, a super inexpensive way to make a trellis for your plants. And then I put a tomato cage around it just to give it a little bit of extra support. The next one I'm gonna plant is that Boston pickling. Filling in with a little bit of extra compost and extra soil, give the plants the support and the nutrients they need. I'm gonna water those good nutrients down into the soil with some worm tea. And if you notice, I am watering at the base of the plants as much as possible, because when water gets on the leaves and stays on the leaves, it can cause disease. So always water at the base of your plants. 
Next, we're gonna plant some California wonder peppers, a delicious pepper. The seeds are in my spring garden seed collection. And in case you guys didn't know, I have a book called Organic Gardening for Everyone, Homegrown Vegetables Made Easy. Everything we're talking about today is in chapter seven, planting your vegetables in the garden. So I'm gonna start digging my hole for my pepper plants. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room in between my cucumbers because we're gonna come back later at the end of the video and plant some basil. So tasty and so delicious to have fresh basil with my grilled peppers. And we're gonna dig down maybe six inches or so to give plenty of room for my pot, which is about six inches tall. And peppers are also a warm weather vegetable and they love warm temperatures. So you wanna plant your peppers outside even a few weeks after your last frost date. They like those warm nighttime temperatures of around 60 degrees. If you plant them too early and your soil is too cold, they'll just sit there they'll get stunted and they won't grow as well. It's worth it to wait until the soil and the air temperatures are nice and warm. They love those warm daytime temperatures, of 70s and 80s. You know what's next, a handful of compost, a handful of worm castings, mix it around, it's ready for our plant. So I'm gonna take my pepper plants out of this little Smart Pots transplanter and I love this little transplanter. It just peels right apart. It makes it really easy to transplant your vegetable seedlings. You'll notice here I've got three pepper seedlings growing together in one pot. And peppers actually like to be grown close together. You can go get a lot more production out of them in a little space here. Because what they tend to do when it gets hot is the leaves shade the peppers themselves from the sun so the peppers don't get sun scald. So I'm just gonna drop it here right into my planting hole. You can see the soil level of my transplanting pot is about soil level with my garden bed, which is exactly the way you want it. Peppers don't need to be planted deep like tomatoes either. And I'm just gonna fill in with soil, kind of tamp it down, add some extra compost on the top. And you can see I actually have a little pepper developing right here. I'm actually gonna snip this off. I know it's, it's hard to do, but I want this plant to get bigger before it starts developing peppers because I want all the energy to go into developing the leaves before peppers start growing. Peppers aren't a vining plant like the tomatoes and cucumbers. This plant will probably grow two to three feet tall, but the branches are very brittle and they do tend to snap off when they get heavy with peppers. So I always like to use some kind of support for my peppers. Here I'm just using a small tomato cage. I'm going to push it down into the soil to give this pepper plant a little bit of support. And it's best to install your pepper supports or your tomato cages at the time of planting because it's a whole lot harder to go back and put a tomato cage over a pepper that's already growing. Now if you don't have a tomato cage, just look around your yard and see what you can find. Even a small little tree branch like this one will help support your peppers. Well, it's amazing to see what we can fit in our little two by six garden bed here. We've got tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and I am leaving this spot empty right here for some watermelon. Good job, everybody. We got our first garden bed planted. It's so much fun. It feels so good to get those vegetables in the ground, doesn't it? Well, now we're gonna move to the garden bed right next door here that we prepared on the last video and plant some squash. If you wanna grow a power producer in your garden that's gonna grow you a ton of veggies, grow squash. Today we're going to plant zucchini squash and golden crookneck squash from the squash seed collection. It's going to be perfect in this two by three bed. We've got it all prepared for planting. Go back and watch that video for more details. Let's get right to it. Now these seedlings were started from seed indoors just about three weeks ago. Squash grows so fast. It's very easy when you start seeds indoors or you can plant seeds directly in the garden bed. So here we have a little zucchini seedling started on the 8th of April. And I'm also going to grab a golden crookneck. And this is a two by three space. It's going to be perfect for two squash seedlings. Again, squash is a warm weather vegetable and it does grow into quite large plants. So you want to grow squash in full sun. I'm going to dig at the back of the garden bed because I want to give my squash as much room as possible to grow. But I'll also give you a little tip for growing a lot of squash in a small space. All right, you guys know the drill. A handful of compost, a handful of worm castings in each hole, really quick and easy. Now I do want to mention that these vegetables, although they were started from seed indoors, they have been hardening off or making the transition to the outdoors over the past week or so. You don't want to plant your vegetables outdoors directly from inside. You've got to make that transition gradually. So you can see here I've got two seedlings growing here in this peat pellet. I've already peeled off the netting. I'm going to go ahead and leave both of the seedlings in because sometimes one of them might die off 
and that way I've got two growing as insurance that I'm going to have some good squash plants here. So I'll just backfill the little peat pellet, some extra compost on top. And don't be worried if your plants kind of flop over like that when you're transplanting. Sometimes they go through transplant shock. It takes them a couple of days to perk up. There's my zucchini. Here's my golden crookneck. This is a beautiful yellow variety of squash. It has a little crook at the neck. And we love squash on the grill. It's so fun when you grow from seed. You get lots of beautiful colors and shapes of squash. And it keeps it really inexpensive too. Besides starting squash from seeds indoors, you can also plant seeds directly in your garden beds. It's so easy to grow seeds this way. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm not going to grow any more squash right here because it would overrun this garden bed. But just to show you how to do it, this is the Golden Summer Crookneck Squash from the Spring Garden Seed Collection. You want to space your seeds a couple inches apart to give them enough room to grow. So you can see I'm spacing them along my drip irrigation hose here. They germinate very quickly when your soil temperature is around 70 degrees. So even wait a few weeks after your last frost date to plant your seeds when the soil temperature is nice and warm. So I've got my seeds placed about uh, two inches apart, two to three inches apart. I'm going to cover them up, just a little bit of soil, tamp it down, and we should see some squash seeds sprout in about five to seven days. Now as these grow, it's gonna be very crowded. So I will go through and clip off the brand new seedlings that are crowding out so that my squash seedlings eventually are spaced about a foot or two apart. You can also plant cucumber seeds directly in your garden beds. It's so easy. You wanna space your cucumber seeds a couple inches apart. Just put them at the base of a trellis. It's always good to plant cucumbers every couple of weeks so that way you have cucumbers ready to harvest at different parts throughout the growing season. A little tip to grow a lot of squash in a little bit of space is to grow them in a tomato cage. Now squash is not a vining vegetable, at least this type of squash is not vining, it's a bush plant. But you can grow them in a tomato cage and as the stem grows you can just train the stem and the leaves up through the tomato cage to save yourself some space and they won't sprawl out quite so far all over the place. So I'm just going to push this tomato cage in. Now what I'm going to do is spread some mulch around the base of my plants to help with water evaporation. It also helps keep the plants cooler in the hot weather. Now mulch is just a fancy word for organic matter that you put in your garden beds. And ideally you'd want to dump about two inches of mulch over your entire garden bed. You can use shredded leaves, you can also use straw, but if you don't have enough, definitely just spread about two inches around the base of your plants. It'll really help keep them cooler in the hotter weather and help keep all the water into the soil and into the plant's roots where it needs it the most. Ideally, you want to transplant your vegetable seedlings into the garden on a nice cloudy day, but that's not the case today. We've got a bright, hot, sunny day. So what I'm going to do just to protect my transplants from going into transplant shock, which is when they kind of wilt over and die in the hot sun, I am going to drape some shade cloth over my cages here, probably for three days or so, because we are going to have a couple 85 degree days, and this will really help them get established before they're exposed to the full brunt of the sun. And I'm putting the, the most of the shade cloth towards the back of the plants because the sun comes from this direction. So this is a 40% shade block. It will still allow some of the sun's rays to get through, but will really help with the intensity of the sun when the plants are young. Congratulations, you did it. Good job, I'm so proud of you. You've got your very first vegetable garden planted in a relatively small space. We're gonna be able to grow a ton of veggies in this space, and we did it in a cheap and simple way. If you haven't started your seeds yet, don't worry about it, it's not too late. Grab one of my spring garden seed collections at calikimgardenandhome.com you can get some seeds started and grow yourself some tasty veggies this summer. And for a how-to manual of how to do everything we talked about today and more, grab my book, Organic Gardening for Everyone. And remember, what we did today is in chapter seven. Comment below, let me know if you're getting your spring garden planted out this weekend, and enjoy your vegetables. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.